Okay, let's take things up a notch now and we'll talk about um, what happens when things get a little bit more complicated. In this case, we're going to talk about something that we refer to as multiple alleles. Now, multiple alleles means that at one gene locus, one point on the chromosome, where there's a single gene, there's more than just two alleles for that gene. Up till now, all the examples that I've explained to you have been one gene locus with just two alleles. But if we had a chromosome, let's just draw a chromosome here, um, and at a particular point on that chromosome, let's say right about here, there's a gene locus, um, of course on, on there as well, but instead of just being two alleles, um, you know, perhaps big H, little h, or two co-dominant alleles that were equally dominant, let's have three alleles this time. And the example that I'm going to talk about is human blood type. It turns out that, as you probably know, um, there, are th there are three different alleles for blood type. There's the allele that we call big I A, and these are standard allele symbols. There's an allele that we call big I B, and there's an allele little i. Now, already, because we're being consistent, because I'm teaching you to use consistent allele symbols, you should be able to look at this and pretty much see what's going on here. Um, they've used these same conventional allele symbols. Big I A and Big I B are obviously co-dominant. They're co-dominant, and that's why they've both been given a big I with a superscript to distinguish between them. Okay, This one, obviously, is the allele for A-type blood, and and this one is the allele for B-type blood. Little i is the allele for O-type blood. But again, the allele symbols being used here are conventional, so it's very easy to understand. Um, what we can read from this is that because big I is a capital letter and, and the allele for O-type blood is a little letter, that means that B-type blood is dominant to O-type blood. So is A-type blood dominant to O-type blood. But A-type blood and B-type blood are co-dominant. So in other words, if a person actually has A-type blood, their genotype could be big I-A, big I-A, or it could equally be big I-A, little i. Both of those would give a person A-type blood. Similarly, a person with B-type blood, they could have the genotype big I-B, big I-B, or alternatively, their genotype could be big I, B, little i. A person who has A, B type blood, like I do, must have the genotype big I, A, big I, B. They have the allele for the A type antigen and the allele for the B type antigen. So on their red blood cells, on my red blood cells, there are both A antigens and B antigens expressed together side by side, just like red and white hairs on a roan cow. And a person who has O type blood must have the genotype little i, little i, because the only way you can have a recessive phenotype is to be homozygous for the allele for that recessive phenotype. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's take an example here. Let's just, let's say that we cross um, someone who is heterozygous for B-type blood with someone who's heterozygous for A-type blood, okay? So we're going to, we're going to draw ourselves a Punnett square now, someone who's heterozygous for B-type blood will have the genotype big I, B, little i. Okay? We know that they have a little i because we've said they're heterozygous for B-type blood. If they were big I, B, big I, B, like this one, um, then we would be saying that they were homozygous for B-type blood. Similarly, we said that we're crossing this person with someone who's heterozygous for A-type blood, which means we know that they're not big I, A, big I, A, because then they'd be homozygous for A-type blood. They must be this genotype here, big I, A, little i, big I, A, little i. So now, we could just do this cross. If, if one of these sperm fertilizes one of these eggs, we're going to get someone who's got A, B type blood. This would give us A type blood. This will give us B type blood. And if one of these gametes fertilizes one of these gametes, we get to get somebody who is O type blood. So in other words, from that marriage, it would be possible to get somebody with any one of the four blood groups. Okay, And that's what we call multiple alleles. It's what happens when you have more than just two alleles for a given gene locus.